Small tools are often overlooked as toys, but what if I told you the saw is just as capable of cutting off your hand as a full-sized saw? In this video, we'll go over what I like about it, its obvious design flaws, a few tips and tricks, and try what the instructions tell you not to do. First of all, the motor is much stronger than I expected. After the disappointing performance of my mini drill press, which I covered in a previous video, I was impressed by how powerful the motor actually is. With a sharp blade, it can cut through thick material, which I had thought would bog down the motor immediately. Unlike larger circular saws I've used in the past, I actually feel like I'm in control of the tool, so I feel safer using it without fearing it might spin out of control. It's light enough to be used with one hand, which is especially noticeable on vertical cuts and when reaching across my workbench for longer cuts. The blade on my old drill-powered circular saw was on the right, so I would always have to bend over uncomfortably to see where I was cutting, and here this isn't an issue because the blade is on the left. I also like how small the base plate is, as well as the motor being inside the handle instead of sticking out sideways. In my old saw they would always get in the way of clamps and jigs that I'd have to move around constantly. The saw also comes with a laser guide. I've used it when working indoors, but unfortunately it's not bright enough to be seen outdoors in an environment with indirect sunlight. I don't know how accurate this adjustment for cutting bevels is, but I was able to chamfer this board precisely enough without offense to make this minimalist shelf for my parts organizer. It also came with this rip fence, though I don't use it. Instead, I score a line with a sharp knife, then cut along it by hand, making sure the blade stays on the side of the offcut consistently. With enough practice, you should be able to cut perfectly straight with close to zero tear out, even with a relatively dull blade. The saw comes with three blades, a carbide tipped blade for wood and a diamond blade for abrasive materials. But what I'm most interested in is the blade for cutting thin steel. The instructions also say not to use abrasive wheels, so we'll test that as well. Here I'm using a cheap blade I bought on eBay. I have many of these, and they're all horrible at cutting wood, being twice as thick as they need to be, with teeth that chip and break off constantly. So I use them mostly on metal instead, where the time I save justifies their frequent destruction. Here I'm cutting a relatively thin steel tube and making plunge cuts into steel mesh, but this is where the effortless cuts end. Although this bolt basically destroyed the blade, I was surprised to see how quickly I was able to cut through it. I lost the arbor washer for this saw, so to use angle grinder discs, I have to improvise with these washers to make sure the disc is supported from behind and is centered on the arbor. And since this is an abrasive wheel, if it's slightly off-centered, it shoes itself quickly. Many people have criticized me for doing this in previous videos, but I feel much safer using it over an angle grinder because it spins slower, and if a disc ever explodes, the guards protect me from almost all directions. Although cutting 1 inch bolts is possible with this saw, it definitely isn't built for this type of work. I've had more success cutting through 3 8 inch steel plate in thinner stock. Since this is a small saw, the depth of cut is limited, but it's just enough to cut through a 2x4. And if I ever have to cut thicker lumber, I just cut it and flip it over to make the final cut from the other side, like I did when I built my workbench. This part also heats up quite fast under use, and I've noticed sawdust always sticks to it, so I think grease might be leaking out from the gearbox due to the heat. Though it's been like this since day one, and so far I've never had any other problems. The only more significant design flaw I found is that part of the blade guard protrudes past the base plate until it spins back. This causes the saw to get stuck for a second while cutting, though I can solve this either by holding the blade guard or by slightly decreasing the depth of cut. Another thing I dislike about it is the location of both of the safety switches. Both aren't located where I place my fingers when I hold the saw naturally. So if you're not left-handed, don't need to cut thick lumber often, and need a small circular saw that's strong and easy to use, I highly recommend it. I'll leave a link to it as well as the cordless version below if you're interested. Also make sure to check out my video on 10 ways to cut steel without an angle grinder. If you like this video, you might find it interesting as well as others on my channel.